Number 10, Stabbed at a Party In March 2022, 25-year-old Tony Butler was at a party with her friend 28-year-old Keegan Barnes in Thornaby, England. During the drinking and dancing, things took a turn for the worst when Keegan Barnes pulled out a knife and stabbed Tony in the leg. As blood started to gush out of her thigh, Barnes stole her injured friend's bank card and left the scene to go shopping. At 6 a.m. in the morning after the incident, Barnes was shown buying a lottery ticket at a store using Butler's stolen card. The paramedics weren't called to the party until hours after Butler had already been stabbed. When they did get there, Butler was lying in a pool of blood and everyone around her seemed unfazed by the whole situation. The paramedics called the police and once they arrived, Barnes tried to deflect the blame onto Butler herself. She claimed Tony was drunk off of her mind and tried to attack her, so she stabbed Tony in self-defense. Other times, she tried to claim Tony might have accidentally injured herself. Before the paramedics could leave to get Tony more medical help, she was already dead. None of her claims held up in court, though, and on March 16th, 2022, Keegan Barnes was found guilty of manslaughter and sentenced to eight years and six months behind bars. Number 9. Caught by Selfie On March 25th, 2015, a man on his way to work one morning found the disfigured and mutilated body of a young woman named Brittany Gargoyle left on the side of the road. The 18-year-old was initially unidentifiable, but when police released her picture to the media, her best friend, 18-year-old Cheyenne Antoine, knew exactly who it was. Brittany and Cheyenne were inseparable. They grew up together in their small town, rural Saskatchewan, Canada. Cheyenne was a former drug addict with a lengthy criminal record by age 18. Brittany was the one who helped Cheyenne get clean and get through life in general. To make matters even worse, Cheyenne had posted a message to Brittany's public Facebook profile asking, where are you? Haven't heard from you. Hope you made it home safe. The two had been out drinking together the night before. After hearing the news, Cheyenne set the most recent selfie the two had taken together as her Facebook profile picture. But little did she know, this selfie would solve Brittany Gargoyle's murder case. In the picture, Cheyenne was wearing a belt, but it wasn't just any belt, it was the exact belt the police discovered as the murder weapon. The young suspect had an alibi, though, claiming she was with her uncle at his house who supported the story. But after looking at closed-circuit television footage, police found out that neither Cheyenne nor her uncle were at the house during the murder. Later, Cheyenne's uncle would admit to lying, saying that she had begged him to be her alibi. After a lengthy investigation filled with questions, arrests, and confessions, Cheyenne Antoine ultimately pleaded guilty to the murder of Brittany Gargle and was sentenced to seven years in prison. Number 8. Pushed Off Bridge in August 2018, 16-year-old Jordan Holgerson was enjoying a nice summer day near a bridge in Washington State. Photos and videos from that day show Jordan having a good time, but all of that would soon take a dark turn. While standing on the edge of a bridge, Jordan was suddenly pushed into the lake nearly 60 feet or just about 18 meters below by her friend, 18-year-old Taylor Smith. Jordan can be seen flailing in panic as she crashed face first into the water. The so-called prank left her badly injured and her friends had to call an ambulance. Afterwards, Jordan would spend three days in the hospital. She had punctured lungs and six broken ribs from the fall. Just days after the incident, Taylor Smith, the friend who pushed Jordan, would be seen partying once again at the Clark County Fair and she even posted pictures of the event onto her Instagram page. Friends and family of Smith said she had no remorse and simply doesn't care about what she did. Because of this, Jordan's family decided to press charges against Smith. Jordan's mother said that the perpetrator deserved to spend as many nights in jail as her daughter had to spend in the hospital. The teen was later sentenced to two nights in jail and 38 days of community service, and she was ordered not to come close to the victim for at least two years. Number 7. Cousins In December 2020, 25-year-old Annie Aguiar was celebrating Christmas with her family in the Australian Alps when things went wrong. Her cousins from Honduras had come to visit visit for the holiday season, but one of them took a strange liking to Aguiar. Her 29-year-old distant cousin, identified by the police as Gabrielle N., fell for Annie at first sight. He reportedly made several advances on her, which were promptly rejected by Annie, who told him she had a boyfriend. But this rejection wasn't taken well by Gabrielle, who was absolutely crushed. Shortly after, Gabrielle forcefully grabbed Annie by the back of the neck and strangled her until she passed out. Once she was unconscious, he grabbed a knife from the kitchen and stabbed her until she she was covered in blood. 
All of this was happening in the basement, and as soon as any sister and brother-in-law heard the commotion, they rushed downstairs to see Gabriel in the act. Any's brother-in-law managed to overpower him and tied him up with the help of his father, who came in shortly after. Soon after the police arrived, Gabriel confessed to his crimes, claiming the only way he could have gotten over any was to make sure no one else could have her. He also confessed to wanting to kill Annie's sister next if given the chance. He is currently awaiting trial and faces charges of both murder and attempted murder. Number 6. The Bet In fall 2010, 15-year-old British teen Rebecca Alward was invited to breakfast by her ex-boyfriend, 16-year-old Joshua Davies. Rebecca spent the entire morning that day getting ready to impress Joshua. She thought this would finally be her chance of getting back into a relationship with him, but once she arrived, things weren't what she expected at all. Joshua lured his ex-girlfriend into a nearby forest, and once she had turned her back to him, he hit her in the back of the head with a rock he found on the ground. It didn't take long for Rebecca to become completely lifeless. Her phone was buzzing with texts from friends and family asking where she was. Shortly after committing the murder, Joshua texted his friend and said, You may just owe me a breakfast. As it turns out, Joshua had fantasized about killing Rebecca multiple times with his friends in the past. One of his buddies actually took Joshua up on the challenge, saying that if he does end up murdering her, he would buy him some breakfast. During the trial, Joshua refused to confess, instead blaming the friend for the killing. The jury sentenced him to a minimum of 14 years in prison, and seven years into that sentence, Joshua finally admitted to carrying out the deed and taking Rebecca's life. Do you think Joshua should get more than 14 years in prison? Tell us in the comments and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Number 5. Thomas and Williams On May 21st, 2015, 20-year-old Lloyda Thomas was visiting her best friend, 25-year-old Angelique Williams. Thomas was pregnant at the time, but despite that, Williams got into an argument with her. Several other friends were there to witness the fight. Soon, the two entered the back of a car, where they continued to argue about the seating arrangements. This led to the driver kicking both of the women out. It turns out this was the straw that broke the camel's back for Williams. She was drunk and angry at the time, so she picked up an empty beer bottle, smashed it on Thomas, and then stabbed her numerous times. One of their friends immediately called an ambulance and Thomas's family, but once they arrived at the hospital, Lloyda Thomas had already been pronounced dead. Unbeknownst to everyone else, Williams was also at the hospital to get her wrist checked out. Apparently, she had injured it from the beer bottle she used to attack the victim. Williams was arrested shortly after police got to the hospital, and during her trial, she came to a deal with prosecution by pleading guilty to manslaughter. She was given a reduced sentence of eight years in prison. Number 4. Beat Down In February 2015, Myra Pointer, a 23-year-old woman from Atlanta, was with her friends at a Burger King restaurant. She was accompanied by Shazman Donald, Takia Strickland, and Armani Kofer, all of whom were about the same age as Myra. During the girls' night out, Myra allegedly sat on top of one of her friend's burgers. This simple mistake led to a massive argument breaking out between the friends, and before long, it escalated into a physical altercation. The three girls grabbed Mariah and started beating her mercilessly, stomping on her again and again. Mariah said she went unconscious during the beating, but when she regained consciousness after a few minutes, the girls were still hitting her. The attackers soon left the restaurant, leaving Mariah bruised and battered. The entire assault was filmed by the boyfriend of one of the girls. The victim suffered two black eyes, a chipped tooth, and a head concussion. A few days after the incident, two of the attackers turned themselves in, while the third woman, Jasmine Donald, was arrested shortly after. All three were sentenced to five years probation and ordered to attend 100 hours of anger management counseling. And in addition to that, they were ordered to pay $25,000 in restitution fees. Number 3. Skylar Niece On July 6, 2012, 16-year-old Skylar Niece snuck out of her home to meet up with two of her best friends, Sheila Eddy and Rachel Schof. She had known Sheila since she was eight years old and recently met Rachel during her freshman year in high school. Skylar was often considered the mature and helpful friend in their group. She was the only one with both of her parents and was an only child, which meant her parents did all they could to give her a good life. This was a sharp contrast to Sheila and Rachel, who came from broken families and were neglected. After a few weeks, Sheila and Rachel had become close, while Skylar wasn't always allowed to hang out with them. This led Skylar planning to sneak out one night to see them, but the following morning, she never came back. Her parents reported her missing, and later, Sheila admitted to Skylar's parents that she had snuck out to get high. But she said they dropped her off at the edge of the road so no one would hear their car. Police then looked into the teen's social media posts, and it wasn't before long that they saw a serious rift among the so-called best friend
friend Trio. One of the officers made a fake Facebook profile pretending to be an attractive teenage boy and started messaging Sheila and Rachel to get more information. Using the evidence they gathered, the authorities questioned the suspects to see if they would lie. With so much police pressure, it was only a matter of time before one of the girls cracked. It wasn't long before the mother of Rachel Shove called the police saying, quote, I have an issue with a 16-year-old daughter of mine. I can't control her anymore. She's hitting us. She's screaming. She's running through the neighborhood. During the call, Rachel could be heard audibly freaking out, and before long, she blurted out the lines, We stabbed her. With this confession, the police took the case to trial. Sheila Eddy was sentenced to life in prison, with the possibility of being paroled after 15 years, while Rachel Schof was sentenced to 20 years in prison. 2. Accidental Birthday Shooting In January 2018, Zachary Woodcock was celebrating his 21st birthday at the Varian House apartment complex in Michigan. He would called over a bunch of friends, including his quote best friend, 21-year-old Richard Cody Skillman. During the party, all the friends ended up in Woodcock's bedroom, where he pulled out a handgun that he was hiding in his pants. Zachary was a huge gun enthusiast and was merely trying to show off his gun in front of his friends. But as soon as he pulled it out, a shot was accidentally fired towards Cody Skillman. And before anyone could blink, Skillman was dead. Woodcock was clearly devastated after seeing what he had done. He was in a severely drunken state himself and overcome with grief. He moved to the side and put the gun to his own head. Both men were pronounced dead once police arrived. No charges were filed since the whole thing was just a terrible accident. Number 1. Heidi Broussard On December 12, 2019, 33-year-old Heidi Broussard and her one-month-old son went missing in Austin, Texas. Heidi's fiancé filed a missing persons report over the disappearances and, soon enough, the FBI and the Texas Rangers were teamed up in a statewide search. But there was no luck. The team didn't give up, though. They soon obtained search warrants to look through the houses of almost every single person Heidi was close to. And, eventually, they reached the trunk of her best friend, Megan Fiera Muska. Megan had been acting strangely for the past few months. She pretended that she got pregnant at the same time as Heidi, going so far as to create a fake baby registry with the items on Amazon. She claimed that she gave birth around the same time as Heidi to the police, while also saying she had no idea Heidi's dead body was locked in her trunk. When police asked to see Megan's baby, they took a picture and sent it straight to Heidi's fiancé. After seeing the picture, he confirmed that it was his child. Megan was quickly arrested as the primary suspect, but as of 2022, her trial is still ongoing, and she has not pleaded guilty to any charges, including murder and kidnapping. Thanks for watching. What's the worst thing a friend has done to you? Who's the worst friend out of all of these people? Tell us in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time on The Bad Badger.